you doing good today. So we're gonna be turning up the Hearts pen blank. I'm pretty excited about this. We filled one of the 3D print, the, the Hearts box, uh, 3D prints last time, and we're gonna turn up a pen. So I went with, uh, what's it called? A Junior Aaron pen kit. It's a really fancy one. Um, I really like these ones. So let me bring the components over here so I can show you guys. I'm gonna lay down a, I just poured a, a, a casting, so I'm gonna put something down there. <laughs> it might be resin. I don't wanna get resin on the pen kit. So uh, here's the blanks. And I cut, uh, you know, I cut the box off um, on the table saw. And uh, somebody, I, I posted uh, a short of this. And uh, somebody was like, w when are you going to demold the, the thing? And they didn't realize that this was like part of the casting. Um, but anyway, here they are. They're looking pretty cool. So uh, you can see that the way I had to kind of really look at what was going on with this, uh, this box, this blank. And I ended up not using the big heart in the middle because it just didn't really line up um, with, with a two-piece kit, you know? So that's actually something I might talk to Nikki and see if she might maybe kind of move these things around a little bit um, because you might want to have the big heart kind of up here. I don't know. But uh, anyway, I'm pretty excited. So we did uh, Blurple uh, around and then we did um, some glow-in-the-dark pink. Now, I want to mention something. We, we used Liquid Diamonds um, for this, this casting. For the resin and I want to show you something hopefully I can kind of zoom in and it'll pick up I don't know if you can see but in there let me let me get like a, a pen or toothpick <laughs> try and point this out um, and make sure that I'm on camera here so uh, where are we at here there we go so right there you can kind of see a line and what ended up happening, I didn't even think about this, Liquid Diamonds is a slower setting resin. I usually use Alumilite Clear Slow. Uh, that's kind of a weird one because it's not very slow setting, but it's slower than the normal. Um, Alumilite Clear Slow is about a 12 minute working time. That means it's gonna harden up, you know, start turning solid in like 12 minutes or so. Um, whereas Liquid Diamonds is, number one, it's really, really thin viscosity and it's got like a 40, five minute working time. I don't know exactly when it would have like started setting up, um, but you know, it's 67 in the shop. So I mean, I'm guessing probably about 45 minutes or so. And I just mixed it up, you know, mixed in the, the goodies and then poured it right away. And I didn't really think about this. I, I usually, I don't have to worry about this stuff, but number one, glow powder is really heavy. So it's gonna tend to wanna sink anyway. And having a, a, a thin viscosity resin and pouring it right away and also having that longer working time what ended up happening was all the glow powder sunk to the bottom so just uh something to think about if you are using liquid diamonds or any other you know longer uh, working time resin especially if it's a thinner viscosity you have to think about stuff even mica powders can sometimes settle in there and you're going to end up with what we have here it's not that bad but it's obviously not what I, you know, would have liked. So if I, if I show you this side, you can kind of, it, it almost looks like the hearts are like see-through. And you, you actually, you can probably see a few little spots and things going on in there. And that's actually, what that is, is glue splotches when I glued the blank in. So it's pretty much transparent right there. Then if you flip it over, whoa, <laughs> right? So, you know, unfortunately that was kind of a blunder on my, my part. I didn't really think about that but I think it's still going to look cool. And like I said, uh, if you're going to be printing this out, you might want to kind of think about how you're going to configure this, um, you know, this blank. And you may or may not really use that, that larger heart in the middle. Um, one other thing to think about, the large heart may actually warp a lot more on, on certain pen kits. So just a couple of little, little quick notes about, you know, what, what, what the results are and everything. Um, and it was pretty fun. We did a poll. So we, we did two blanks. Where's the other one? We did um, glow powder on the outside and then green hearts on this one. Now, again, the glow powder sink, I'm sure, to the bottom. So this one's kind of, I'm actually kind of glad we went with the blurple one. Uh, but uh, it was pretty cool. We did a couple of polls on, uh, uh, let's see, on YouTube Shorts as well as, or actually, I guess it was the community tab on YouTube on my, my uh, channel. 
as well as Instagram. And uh, overwhelmingly, it was 70% to 30%. Everybody wanted the, the purple ones. So uh, again, here's the, the other one. I don't know what to do with this one because I'm certain that the, the stuff sank to the bottom. So eh, I don't know. I might look at that. But anyway, uh, here's the pen kit. Forgot to show you that too. So this one's pretty cool. It's a Junior Aaron. I have a link down in the description below to this kit. Um, it's, I don't know if we're gonna be able to uh, get a really good shot of this. Let's see if I can kind of get everything in the same plane. So where are we at here? It's hard, everything's reversed. So around this, I know I'm not getting a very great shot of it, but it's got kind of some pretty cool embellishments around the, the band on the, the end of the pen there's also i think it's like a maple leaf i don't know if it's really going to pick up on on this i don't know if you can see that but anyway it's got one of those there and is that it oh and on the the cap this one actually might show up yeah it's a maple leaf So it's a pretty cool kit. I think it's like rhodium or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever plating it is. It's a good one. It's a pretty fancy kit. So if you want to like really spruce something up, this is a pretty good kit for that. So I think that's about it. So let me stop real quick, see what you guys are talking about in the chat. Who's here first? Mike. Like Mike was here first, according to my thing here. And who else do we got here? We got Clyde and Gene. Brian, how's it going? And Mark's here. Awesome. Jim's here. Lelia. Let's see. Carrie's here too. <laughs> Will they be greeting cards or? <laughs> I don't know. We'll have to see what they look like. I think they'll look pretty cool. Cool. Yeah, it's a Canadian pen. <laughs> It's a pretty cool kit. It's one of my favorites. If I'm going for something that's like fancy, like really fancy and like, you know, may lean towards uh, giving it to, you know, I don't know, a female, it, it, it has a feminine quality to it. So it's it's a pretty good one for, for women, I think. I don't know, not that this is going to a woman, but it looks good for men too. But I think it's one of the kits that I kind of pick when I'm like, yeah, I think I think somebody, this might be a good gift for someone. All right, so let's see. We're going to switch to the Canon view. I got to set this camera back up a little bit better. Oh, uh, actually, before we begin, I also wanted to mention, uh, I'm going to go back here and put it on me. Um, the, the Turner's Warehouse big meetup is next weekend. So Friday and Saturday next weekend, the 17th and 18th. It is going to be a blast. There are some amazing speakers, or not speakers, uh, demos that, that people are doing. Um, let me see if I can remember everybody. Um, I'm doing one on mixed material casting. You got Curtis Seebeck doing stabilizing. Um, Elise is doing like resin casting and, and like mixing colors. Um, I think Jim's doing something about kitless pen turning. I'm not sure exactly what the topic was offhand. It was something kind of sp specific with that. And Bob's doing like kind of uh, uh, charcuterie boards and, and kind of it, it also flows into like tables. Uh, it's the same kind of thing. Chad's doing something on, I forget what he's doing. <laughs> he's doing something, I don't know. So, and I might've missed somebody, but uh, really awesome demos. Those are all free to anybody. Um, so make sure if you can make it out there, uh, they're in Gilbert, Arizona, the Phoenix area. Um, head out there. Uh, it's going to be pretty fun. It's going to be, you know, two full days of lots of cool stuff going on. I'm doing some one-on-one -on -one classes. I don't know if they have been filled yet or not. Um, I, cause they're, they're running all the, the reservations through Amy. So if you want to do a one-on-one -on -one with me and it can be whatever topic you want, you know, resin casting and, and maybe some turning stuff. I'm not particularly awesome at turning stuff, um, but definitely any kind of resin casting topic. Um, we, I don't know how long they are. It's like probably like uh, a couple hours or something like that. Um, we just get to hang out and do some casting. So it's going to be kind of fun. So uh, contact Amy if you do want to do one of the one-on-ones with me. So anyway, I just wanted to kind of remind you guys, I'm looking forward to that. I'm trying to get everything all like, I got to ship something out on Monday. Um, I'm going to be bringing some stuff to sell. I don't, <laughs> I don't even think I have a, a, a 
way of selling stuff, taking payments there. So I don't know, I'm gonna have to figure that out, but I'm bringing some, I'm actually gonna bring some 3D model things. Um, Cause I know that that was one of the pr tough things with these things is um, shipping them. So I'm gonna actually bring some of those out if you wanna do casting in them, uh, just kind of a variety of different ones that I had left over. Uh, I'm bringing some random blanks. A lot of the ones that we were like, I, I'd have like one or two left over from live streams um, that didn't get into uh, the, the subscription boxes. So I have some of those, some blanks some aluminum honeycomb. I might bring some of the Blurple and uh, uh, glitter packs. I gotta make those though, so those may or may not come. Uh, and they'll be on discount there if you wanna buy them um, at the event. So I'm, I'm bringing some stuff. It's gonna be pretty fun. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, Turner's is 17th and 18th. All right, so let's start turning this thing. Let's get on this. Turn the light on a little bit. Let's see here. I got to get this thing re kind of. I didn't really configure this angle. It ought to be pretty good. So I'm going to go with the between centers turning. Pop my dead center in there. Live center goes in the tailstock. Let's start with the cap. See how that goes. There's my, there we go. Oh, I got to get the. Whoop de doo set up. Let's see here. Open my. Open up the. Oh, there's that box. Dust collection stuff. Okay, let me let me test the dust collector. See what the, the noise level is on this thing. Maybe. There we go. Contact. All right, that ought to be pretty good. Oh, I need my phone so I can see the chat. Let's see here. Make the hearts red and the other area white. Oh, I like that. <laughs> ah, Brian's here too. Broom Rider, thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. Let's uh, pop that guy on there. Get some safety glasses on and we can start turning this thing. Let's do this. a link to the hold on a minute I've got too many things going on in my brain I'm gonna link to the 3d print thing I don't think I did so if anybody wants to order at the the 3d print files so if you have a 3d print printer um, at home and you want to print out these uh, these models they are available on my website right there and I got a ton of other models too Pretty fun to do. Pretty fun to do. All right, let's let's do this. As expected, it's turning great. Liquid diamonds turns pretty nice. 
And uh, the resin 3D prints turn great too. Um, there's really almost, a lot of people ask like, what filament do I use? And I use resin printers. Um, I used to use filaments and I kind of gave up on it because it just wasn't amazing, <laughs> really. So I decided to try resin 3D printers and I really like the resin better. Uh, I use Elegoo, uh, uh, I have an Elegoo Mars and an Elegoo Saturn um, printer, but I use the Elegoo ABS-like, that's what literally what it's called, ABS-like um, resin, and that stuff's a little bit softer and it's very similar, so, uh, or, or less brittle, I should say, it's not necessarily softer than the other stuff, but it's less brittle than the other uh, you know, standard and, and even the water washable from Elegoo. Um, and I don't know how it compares to every other, you know, thing on the market, but um, there are a couple other ABS-like um, resins, UV resins for the 3D printers. Uh, and that's probably the direction you want to go. Um, you're probably going to get the best cutting, like best machinability with one of those less brittle uh, resins. I have tried a couple of other ones. The main thing is you kind of want to look for, you know, like usually they'll have some technical specifications. And look for the one that has, you know, that's developed so that it's not brittle. Some of the tech specs you can actually look at that will indicate, you know, how brittle it's going to be is the elongation. That's a, I don't exactly know what that means, but it, it has to do with how, how much it'll kind of take, you know, kind of bending like forces applied to it, um, as well as what the hardness level is. You kind of want something that's kind of hard. You don't want it to be like super soft, otherwise it won't polish. Uh, but, you know, you can kind of compare it to a Lumalite, or most of your resins are going to be somewhere in the shore uh, 80, 80 um, D, shore 80 D. Um, and I think that that's pretty close to what these, these resins are. So when you're turning it, it's not like there's a big difference between, you know, your resin, casting resin, and the 3D resin. So it works pretty good, but I will say that filaments work fine too with these. So if you have like a, a FDM style printer, not to say that you can't use those, you'll probably get the best results using ABS or PETG. Uh, those two, those are the two that I used when I, when I was using an FDM printer. ABS is a little bit more, uh, you know, like less like brittle, but you have to watch out. It'll kind of heat up on you when you're machining it, especially drilling it. PETG, the only drawback I would say with that is most of the time it's going to be transparent. So you have to kind of think about that too. But it'll work both ways. PLA works but I've found that a lot of times it's pretty brittle and things that are like solid, like this little white heart, usually with FDM printers, you, you gotta make sure that you got 100% infill and, and really dial those settings in um, so that it's, it's more of a solid blob. But I've found that most of the time, solid things like that don't really turn that well on FDM printers. Little things like outlines are pretty good though. Phillips here, what's up dude? Glad to have you. Oh, Mark S is here, how's it going? All right, so we're getting pretty close here. Just a few more, a few more passes.
very close now. Oh, you've been using PLA too, huh? And so here's the other thing is I, last time I used an FDM printer, that was like four years ago, three or four, and the materials have, you know, come a long way, even the printers. Um, so, you know, that's, that is one thing. It's doable. I mean, you can use pretty much any material. Um, but I will say my biggest thing is this stuff is almost indistinguishable from the, from the casting resin. Um, but, you know, resin printing comes with a lot of uh, drawbacks, too. It's really messy and smelly, so it's really not for everybody. Whereas the FDM printing, I mean, there's so many. The, the other drawback to resin printing is you, you're really stuck with a very few colors. And, you know, you can dye it. You can even add mica powder to some extent, but it makes things a lot more difficult with the print settings and all that. you got to really play with it. So, you know, resin printers, I like them, but, you know, you, you're, you're kind of signing up for a little bit more than, uh, than the FDM style printers. Uh, one thing I'm pretty happy with, though, is for the most part, I've had pretty good results uh, without a whole lot of messing around with the, the machines. So that's been pretty nice. And actually, uh, one, one question that a lot of people, well, I, I recently got this question, and I think a lot of people probably didn't even, haven't even necessarily thought about it. I'm gonna get some uh, examples here, just to show you. Um, but I wanted to say, a lot of people asked, you know, do you print, you know, with, uh, what, how, how do you deal with, um, like, how do you lay the, the print on your bed? Like, what orientation do you print in? And I print everything vertically. So um, if I'm doing a cylinder type thing like, like these, I'm just going to put it straight up. Um, and it's been working fine. And then even with the boxes, like I don't angle it. If you watch a lot of the other resin 3D printing, you know, YouTube channels where they're making like, like little miniature kind of things um, that have a lot of detail and all that stuff, they'll print it on an angle with a lot of supports and all this stuff. And I just honestly did not want to deal with supports. That's kind of, you got to learn how to do that right. And then you also have to clip everything off. Now on a box, you know, if all the supports were just underneath the box, that really wouldn't matter to me. I don't really care. But for something like this, nipping off a bunch of supports and, and dealing with all that stuff is not something I wanted to deal with. So I just print them vertically. The only issue is the way that resin printers work, it's, it's very difficult to, to explain if you don't really know how they kind of operate, but it basically, you gotta kind of peel everything off of this, this plastic sheet. It kind of half cures it to that and also cures it up to the, you know, either the material or the, the bed. And so having a lot of flat surfaces can kind of cause some difficulties in printing. That's why people print on angles uh, are one of the reasons. Um, but, you know, like I said, I, I've, I've been able to just print ver everything vertically, you know, like, like normal orientation, let's say, um, without any issues at all. All right, so one little final... One final touch here. I like the shaping and everything, so I think we're good. Yeah, now, I'm not, uh, one thing I want to mention, you know, I, that's how I do it. And I'm not saying that's the right way. It's just, it's the way that I do it. <laughs> because I don't want to deal with support. Um, you may get even better results by doing it, you know, printing things on angles and, and using supports, possibly. I, I don't know. It just, like I said, I, it's, I don't have time to really dive headfirst into 3D printing and understand every nuance about it. So I just kind of said, well, let's see if I can just print these things flat and see what happens. And it's been fine so far. So it is doable that way. Uh, but if you're so inclined, you know, definitely try different things out, see what, you know, get, gets you the best results. 
I'm going to move this camera just a little bit because it's kind of in my way. Get kind of a side view here. How about that? Lorenzix is here. What's up? Jen's here. Hey. Oh, I'm going to slow the speed down. So this is some 400 grit. I got it pretty smooth. There's a few tool marks here and there, but I think we can probably get it sanded up with the 400 here. I have been cranking blanks out this last week, finishing up an order for stainless bottle stoppers. They ordered a bunch of uh, hybrid uh, bottle stoppers, so they're going to be fully stocked. Uh, we did like they're transparent, kind of different colors with uh, you know high, uh, stabilized burls on the bottom. Those are a good. That's a really good um, stopper blank because you don't have to deal with trying to hide the you know, the hardware stuff inside the blank, the, the threads or uh, inserts. You, you mount that into the wood, and then um, but you get that, you know, that see-through. You can see the, those burl caps. You get to have that. They're pretty cool looking. They have a little bit of micro starlight glitter in there to add a little bit more excitement. So those will be uh, updated soon. And Stainless is going to a bunch of shows, so make sure to check them out, see what their schedule is. Uh, they may be coming to a, a, a town near you. Unfortunately, they're not going to make it out to Turner's Warehouse this weekend. They were, they were going to try, but they got a show either the same weekend or like the like right after or something like that so they couldn't make it out uh, one thing i also want to mention so this liquid diamonds it's an epoxy and realistically i would prefer on these ones waiting especially it's not a whole lot of resin uh, you know, it's not like I poured a brick of blanks. You're only, you know, pouring kind of a single blank at a time here. Um, so it's not a, just, it's not a ton of resin. Um, I would probably rather wait a week on these to make them, to make sure they're fully cured. Epoxies, the way that they cure, um, as opposed to urethanes, Epoxies just have a, a it's, it's a straight line curve of, of, you know, from day one to day seven, it's going to cure evenly along that line. Whereas urethanes kind of have a, a they, they, they go really high, you know, they, they cure quite a bit, like 80% cured within, you know, a, a day or two, and then it kind of tapers off a little bit over the, you know, until it reaches that, that full cure. And so like Alumilite Clear Slow is a urethane. It has a five-day cure schedule, <clears throat> and um, you know you can kind of get away with turning things and, and it being pretty darn hard, close close to the final hardness, within a few days, really. Um, whereas epoxies, typically, you know, you're you're better, especially on smaller pours like this, um, you're better waiting that full seven days. And uh, Liquid Diamonds is a seven days seven day uh, cure schedule. So I guess it has been seven days, but um, that's right. I was I was thinking about it. we used to do it where we'd pour on Wednesday and turn on Saturday. So it's been seven days. So it should be fully cured at this point. But just kind of wanted to mention that sometimes 
you know you might find that your epoxy blanks aren't they're a little bit soft still after just a couple days I'm gonna get this wiped out I'm gonna hit it with some denatured alcohol real quick and then I'm gonna get you guys in for a close-up Hopefully. Maybe. That doesn't look like it's... Oh, there we go. It's looking pretty good. I like those little hearts. So everything turned out good. It didn't get warped or anything. That was one of the questions with that big heart. You know, it, it may, depending on the, the pen that you're turning, it may kind of get a little bit warped out, you know, maybe. These are looking great. Can't wait to get this polished up. All right, so we're gonna switch to the wet sanding. And I actually, I'm gonna use some, some uh, distilled water today. I don't know if that's gonna really make that was one of the questions that I that I kind of came up with on this. If you're just using tap water and you got, you know, no matter what tap water you're using, um, tap water has minerals in it. And so, you know, I've seen on, on TV, you know, I, I, we just bought a new big screen TV, flat screen. And I was looking up like how to, how to kind of clean it off. We had like a 15 year old TV that I really just didn't care that much about. <laughs> before you know if it gets a scratch whatever um and uh they were saying that they you know if you're going to use any generally you just wipe it off with a, a um like a microfiber non-scratch towel but if you need to kind of clean something grease or something off um, they want you to use distilled water um, and it's because it has minerals in it and it could scratch that screen so i'm thinking well if you're trying to polish plastic you know, you might, I don't know. I don't know how big of a deal this is really, if it's like super noticeable or anything, but I thought, let's give it a shot. Why not? See what happens. I'm gonna get me some new papers. So we're gonna go with uh, the Zona papers, the polishing papers. I'm gonna use green, gray, and blue. The first three steps. I don't really go the full way with these things finish up with the magic juice plastic polish donna's here what's up yeah so distilled water interesting And I found that the the UV, you know, the it's not really it's sort of UV resin, the the 3D printing resin, photopolymer, <laughs> um, uh, polishes up pretty well too. Um, and that's again, you know, when you're looking at those specs, you you kind of want to go with something that's that reaches somewhere near shore 80 80D um, on the hardness scale. That'll help make sure that you can get it nice and polished you know get it glossy and that you know if it's if it's like in the eight you know in the range of you know 78 to 82 that's about the same thing as alumilite clear slow and most of your epoxies they're all kind of in that 80 d range so it'll polish up nice it turns nice
the tough thing about this is it's not like I'm doing a head-to-head -head test with like <laughs> distilled water versus other, <laughs> you know. So I I don't know. I just thought I'd give it a shot, see if there's any noticeable difference in any way. Um, another thing is you could have a different bucket for every grit too, um, you know, because you could have little grit particles from the previous grit in that water. I don't know. Just kind of depends on how OCD you want to get. I will say that I get perfectly good results using tap water and the same bucket anyway. So, you know, and if you're finishing up with, uh, you know, like a plastic polish, that's the other thing is those, you know, I don't, I just don't really know how, you know, what, what scratch level, what grit, let's say, is the the minerals that are in tap water what what grit level is would that even leave a scratch on something um, because if it's lower or higher let, let's say if it's higher than you know what you're polishing with then who it doesn't really matter you're going to polish it out or not see it something you know one of the two so i i don't know who even knows Yeah, I can't wait to see this thing on a pen kit, too. I think it's going to look good on that Junior Aaron. What I actually kind of wanted to put this on was uh, the Virage uh, Rollerball. But I didn't have any. I got to I gotta stock up on pen kits. I'm, I'm kind of starting to dwindle. Really, my supply is dwindling in there on what, what options I have. All right, that ought to be good there. We'll finish up with a little bit of blue. And I don't know exactly what the grit, you know, level is for these papers. I, I, I'm pretty sure that the green, I, I tried to convert it to like a the p scale of, of like sandpaper and i think that the green is somewhere in the like 700 you know p grit level somewhere around there the gray is somewhere in the, like the the thousand to 1100 or so and then this blue i'm not entirely certain but it's you know higher than that 12 to 13 1400 something like that So, you know, you get it up in the, somewhere in the thousands with the papers and then that magic juice will just make it pop. All right, I think that ought to be pretty good. Let's see what this thing looks like. So, this is just polished up a little bit. It's going to sing at us. I mean, it will literally shine once we hit it with the magic juice. Bummed out about the, the glow on the back there. But these look amazing on the front here. And that blurple, ooh, it's looking sweet. All right, so let's do a little bit of magic juice polish. Get the water out of the way, how about that? Still on the hunt for, and I think I, I don't, I, I mentioned this on one of the streams before, I'm still looking for a, a, like a paper towel that is non-abrasive. Um, and w one of the things that I, what I'm looking for is something that you can buy in like a roll, like, like 
paper towels. That would be fabulous if they have something like that. I'm still on the hunt for that. Just to make sure. Some, some of these paper towels are actually quite abrasive. And so if you're trying to polish, if you're putting like a, pl a plastic polish that has like a, you know, super high grit level, and then your, your paper towel is lower than that, has a grit level of, of less than that, then you're, you're not really winning the fight. <laughs> you know, you're only going to get it up as high as that, that paper towel. Come on. There we go. All right, so step one. Wipe some of that on, fire it up. You're just using kind of light to moderate pressure here. You don't want to, you know, press hard. You want to let that polish do its job. Just kind of wipe off any excess, and I'm telling you, all you even, all, <laughs> you barely even need to go any higher than step one. It is once you hit it with step one. Let's get you guys kind of like sideways to this. Thing. I mean, it's glossy. Look at that. Step one. We got six more steps to go, and I'd be happy with that. Ah, that's such a bummer. You can see the glue splotches in there too. Uh, one thing I also want to mention is I did use a black painted tube on this. Uh, the Blurple, there's a ton of, you know, I, I really loaded it up in there, but even still, the way that, you know, interference powders or, or color shift powders work, they work best with a dark background. So um, I always use a black painted tube on the back of something that has interference or color shift powders just to make sure it's not even, I don't think you'd see the tube, it's just, having a, I'd rather have the darker background um, than, you know, like brass. It's kind of shiny, so. Yeah, the hearts look good. Uh, let me, I'm going to switch to this side, because this is really, that's the best side right there, where you can really see that glow powder. All right, step two. Brown paper towels. Yeah, but these work fine, and I have them on hand. But um, what I'm what I'm curious about is is if they have a paper towel that's that's literally scratch, you know, non-scratch. Like it's like that's part of the the whole thing. Regular paper towels. Eh. And I don't even know if it really matters that much. You know, it, it just kind of depends. But, you know, a couple of reasons why I'm pretty sure that normal paper towels are pretty abrasive. Um, just one thing, you know, with the 3D printing, you, you don't want to wipe off the FEP sheet with a paper towel. Um, it'll scratch it. And, I, and I, I did that right away. 
And so, you know, definitely, you know, some of these things may kind of add up. I, I, I think in most cases, it's not that big of a deal. And I've been, you know, using bounty paper towels to do this stuff for a long time. Um, and it works fine. You know, it's not like there's this noticeable craziness to it. But, you know, the compounding of, you know, maybe the, the tap water plus the paper towels plus, you know, <laughs> all these different things. If you kind of start eliminating them, you know, a few of them at least, you may find that you're getting better results. And so, you know, these are the, the Scott shop towels. Um, the, they're definitely <laughs> funny. I, I, I use paper towels. Like, if I have to blow my nose, I use paper towels. And I, and I finally gave up using the bounty ones. You know, that, that alone tells me that bounty paper towels are much more abrasive than these shop towels are because I, I refuse to blow my nose with them. It, it hurts. <laughs> it scratches your nose up. So figure okay well at least the these blue shop towel things are a little less abrasive and I have these other little things that, that work the problem I have is they, they you get they don't absorb or hold anything they're like very thin and I'm pretty sure these are non abrasive and they're safe um, they'll rip you know they're not it's not like a rag that if it gets caught up on there it's gonna like rip your finger off um, it'll just rip in half, so it's safe. I think it's non-abrasive, but I'm not sure about that. But it just—it's—it's it's very thin, and and the stuff. I mean, I'm almost like you may as well just use your finger <laughs> to rub the stuff on. Which, that's another thing. You could probably just use your finger because it's non-abrasive, um, unless you got dirt or something on there, um, and you could just polish it that way. Possibly, I don't know. Who knows? Maybe I'll finish up with this thing. Just wipe off any excesses. I don't know. Like I said, splitting hairs on a lot of this stuff, I think. But it's always fun to kind of try different things. And it, it, this is kind of a test where, you know, there's, there's really no drawback. It's not like it's risky. <laughs> to use denatured, uh, not, not alcohol, denatured, uh, not denatured, distilled. Did I say de denatured alcohol? Distilled water. That's what I'm using. Um, let's see here. I guess that's it. All right. So let's see how this thing, it's looking pretty awesome. Oh man. Shiny. Ooh. Ooh. That's just silky looking. It literally, it looks like it's made out of glass in person here. That polished up real nice. I, I think this might actually be the first time I've polished, used, used magic juice with liquid diamonds, actually. Um, I haven't turned anything with liquid diamonds for a little while now. So yeah, works with that too. All right, get the body section here going. Tissue with high recycled, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you could use a uh, uh, toilet paper. I'm thinking that I don't think it's a far stretch to find something that's like a paper towel type type thing that's non abrasive. It, it there must be something like that that and and that that rips. Um, I don't necessarily care that that much about like lint. Um, you know, one thing that, that you could maybe, you'd have to seriously consider the, the safety consequences of this, but if you use microfiber towels, like if you cut them into really small little squares, something that can't really wrap up and grab your finger, you know, 
Um, you could do that. Um, that would work. These are non-abrasive. These are, are really good at, at, you know, cleaning things like that. Um, so you could do something like that for sure. And they're pretty cheap. You can buy like a huge pack of them on, on Amazon. Um, so, you know, there's, there's ways to do this, but I'm just, I'm kind of, I just picture in my head that you can get like a paper towel roll that's non-abrasive <laughs> you know, somewhere. And I'm sure it's going to cost money, you know, more, quite a bit more than standard paper towels, but I don't know. I'll keep looking. I'll let you guys know. Okay, let's do the second one. <clears throat> Where are you guys at here? Let's move you guys just a little bit back. So does anybody have any big plans for Valentine's Day? I don't think we're, we're probably gonna have like, I don't know, we might cook like steaks or something, you know. Tighten it up there. There we go. Thought it was a little bit loose. All right, looking good, looking good. All right, this one's looking good too. Getting things rolling.
take another peek at it. Yeah, that's looking... Doing good with the shaping so far. Take a peek and see how the ends are here. I think I got a little, little bit to take off on that side. This one's pretty good. Yeah, I like the shape. All right, let's see here. What am I missing? Nothing in the chat, huh? Nobody's doing anything for Valentine's Day. Maybe I'm. Maybe my chat got screwed up. No plans. Nobody wants to talk about their plans. Maybe secret plans. No plans there. Oh man. Hallmark's gonna be mad at you guys. <laughs> I feel like I got a little bit of a bump right in the middle there. It's hard to see though. Yeah. I don't know. <clears throat> I think I'm just making it worse at this point. <laughs> Let's do some sanding. Get the 80 grit smoother out. I think I'm going to start with 240 grit this time because I'm pretty sure there's a good amount of um, tool marks left. I didn't really do a very good job on that side. Working. Uh.
that wasn't too bad. Uh, actually, I, I mentioned the microfibers. These things are extremely good at picking up dirt too. So, you know, you could even wipe off uh, blanks. I wouldn't do it while it's running, but um, you know, it'll pick up dust and stuff off, off things when you're sanding it pretty well too. Just a little random if, if you need. I was actually using those things to wipe off in between sanding. Um, I had to do a little bit of polishing on those hybrid stoppers I was making. And, uh, and it worked really well to get the surface, you know, get that dust and, and junk off. And it holds a lot of stuff. That's the beauty of those microfibers. The surface area um, can hold a ton of stuff, material. So they're, they're a pretty good thing. You know, they sell them at like Costco in big packs and tons of, tons of them on, on Amazon. Not a bad thing to have around the house or the shop or both. All right, moving up to 400 grit here. Um, that doesn't really work. You can't really print things um, in midair that's the one and, and that's that's the one constraint that we have is it's not going to just print stuff um, without having some sort of support you know so i couldn't have we were trying to print things where it was just you know vertical and like the hearts would be on the sides of it but it, it wouldn't work that way it would just sag and fall off you always have to have stuff you're, you're underneath holding it up um, and, and again, you know, I was talking about supports and all that kind of stuff. There are some some things you could maybe do it where you could print it and have, you know, supports if, if you were printing it on its side, but then you got to cut all the supports off and mess around. And so none, all of my models are able to just be printed, you know, vertically without any supports. It's a good idea though. Someday I'm sure they're gonna come out with stuff there where you can just design whatever and it'll just print it. But the way that these, you know, and it really doesn't matter which kind of printer you're using. Um, the, the only difference is resin printers print kind of upside down where, where like the stuff is hanging on to a, a build plate that goes up. And so it's like hanging from something whereas FDM printers, it's, you know, the, the base is on the bottom and it prints it up, you know, layer by layer upwards. Oh, that's cool, 48 years, whew. You guys met on Valentine's Day? Wow. She put up with you for that long? Jeez.
All right. Wipe that off with some denatured alcohol. Ooh, that's looking good. Okay. And we can do some wet sanding now. Get rid of the dust collector. Oh, that's nice. Sound of silence. Okay. So I'm going to get you guys a side on shot here. Hopefully, Hopefully it'll show up. There we go, I think. Get that out of the way, maybe. Is that in focus? I can't tell. That looks like it is. Still bummed about the <laughs> the back side of these arts. Eh. You win some, you lose some. It's looking good though so far. That's one of the reasons why I, I typically stick with resins that I, I kind of use all the time. I, I use liquid diamonds sometimes, but typically for just like pen blanks for this type of thing, I would use Alumilite Clear Slow. And it just, I'm so used to that time frame with things that I, I don't think, sometimes I don't really think about, you know, the effects of slow setting resins because I'm usually using something that's going to set up on me quick <laughs> so I don't have to think about it. That's one of the big reasons why I like the Illumilite Clear Slow is that that working time is just perfect. It's generally, aside from a few things, it's it's usually enough time. You know, in some cases you might need, if you're doing like, you know, a bunch of colors or something super complex, you might need to kind of hurry a little bit, but generally there's enough time to get everything done. And then you don't really have to worry about it moving around, doing anything, sinking, you know, too much, as long as you're kind of close to that, that end of the work time. Tony's here, how's it going? Yeah, I'm pretty happy with this thing. Uh, again, and all the credit for the design goes to Nikki. Uh, she came up with that. She and she did, just came up with it on her own. I didn't even. We weren't even talking about it really. She's like, "Hey, I got this thing. <laughs> what do you think?" I was like, "That's sweet." So she does really good with the design, and then you guys came up with great colors on on the color choices from the chat last week. And so the, I'm going to be doing the subscription boxes. You guys are going to get some of these. Um, I won't be using liquid diamonds for, <laughs> so you won't have to worry about uh, stuff sinking. I think I'm going to go with this purple and, and, and glow powder heart for the subscription box. Um, I, I don't know. I, I, everybody loves this, this color, these two colors. Um, so I thought I'd just go with that. And then, um, but I'll, I'll use the Lumilite clear. Make sure I don't mess up with that stuff. Um, so it should be even better on those. And then I'm going to be, I know it's going to be kind of late for Valentine's Day, but I figured, you know, hearts are pretty cool no matter, no matter when. Hearts are a good one. Uh, but I'll be ahead of the game on the subscription boxes for St. Patrick's Day. So I got something, got some cool ideas for St. Patrick's theme blanks in the subscription boxes. Seventy-seven thousand. Is it really? Wait, is it really up to seventy-seven thousand?
thought it was like 60 something. I'm gonna have to double check on this. What's going on? I don't really monitor it <laughs> necessarily or keep my eyes peeled on that. Oh, 67. Okay. Okay. I was like, wait, how did, how did, uh oh, I gotta charge the battery for my camera. Hold on. I got a plug. I was like, where did I get 10,000 subscribers? Cool. <laughs> okay, there we go. Battery's okay, guys. Battery, oh, I think. Wait, what the heck? Hey, hey. I'm having issues here. There we go. I wish this camera had a better, um, like port or whatever connector thing on in the cam ugh. in the camera for where you plug the power cable in because it just and it's not like I I beat the heck out of this thing it just it it uh moving it around and plugging it in and out you know it uh it gets loose and I don't know how to like fix it I end up just buying another camera this is like the fourth one that I've bought and I'm just like ugh. It's just tough. They're so cheap. They, you're like, okay, well, compared to anything else, I guess they're just disposable. But there's been nothing wrong with them. The camera works fine. It's the stupid power cable connector. Not fun. Uh, one thing to note here, on this blank, we were getting pretty close where you know these these hearts are kind of um, connecting together, and so that's actually that's what what you might run into with the big heart in the middle, if you're doing a thinner, you know this is this is thinner than the cap. I don't I don't think that you'd have as much problem with the cap on, on this pen because it's pretty wide, um, but I think that you'd probably you know that 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 big heart that's in the middle of the the blank so it's probably good the, the whole point is though it's probably a good thing i didn't try to get that in on this one so just to just to show you guys again this one's bigger in the middle and so i ended up but it didn't work with this kit so i ended up just taking the two the two ends um, but that's probably going to kind of wrap around when you cut into it on on even maybe even on a cap for this thing so just just watch that um make sure you're using wider you know kits and and this is another reason why a lot of times i'll leave my blanks kind of thick just because sometimes the materials you know if you, if you got different random materials in there they tend to work a little bit better on thicker pens you know, I like I don't even well, I don't like slimline kits, but I, I you know, for for stuff like this, I would not use a slimline. It's just going to end up so thin in the end in most cases unless you go for like the, the kind of fat middle and then and then taper it way down at the ends. I just think you're better off going with like a Sierra or Cigar. Uh, you know, even though it does cost more, uh, but those kits are just kind of junk generally. <laughs> I don't like slim lines. That's a good one to just turn a piece of walnut and try and sell it for, you know, five or 10 bucks at, at a show or something like that. But if you're going for something, you know, with kind of a fancier blank, go for a fancier pen. Just think that you're going to have less problems. Um, and especially with these 3D prints, a lot of times you know, people, um, uh, another, another thing is the vertical, like the pinstripe, 3d models they have a, a hole in the middle and if you turn it down too thin you start cutting into the uh it's, it's hard to explain let me just show you guys for anybody that like prints these or buys you know blanks from me um the reason that i put a a, a hole in the middle is so that the well so i'm not taking up as much I don't have to use that material there, but there's there's a hole in the middle and there's like kind of a ring around there. And so if you turn it too thin on like a slim line, you start cutting into that thing and you don't have the spines, you have like this blue, like at the ends of a slim line, you're gonna have this like cut into the blue. It's hard to really explain, but most of my vertical, like the ones that are cast in a tube, 
have that hole um, so that you know so just kind of think about that it, you're, you're you're generally better off going with like thicker kits on some of these types of blanks that's just one scenario definitely better on, on those types of blanks for me all right so let's see here Nikki's here what's up these things are sweet Okay, I think I've sanded that to death with the green. Move on to the gray. Carl's here. What's up? <laughs> oh, you got carried away cutting pens. I hear you, man. I did that. Oh, man, I totally. So here's some here's a stupid story that I'll share with you guys. You're going to laugh at me. I was so mad. So uh, I was telling you that I was doing a bunch of uh, blanks this last week. I, I got an order, you know, I ha I've had an order actually for those stopper blanks from, from stainless bottle stoppers for a while. So I finished those up, I was pouring those, and then uh, Turner's Warehouse, I'm restocking them on the glitter blanks and the uh, pine cone blanks. And I, I'm such an idiot. I got, I was pouring the purple glitter blanks that I make, a batch of those. Two batches, I should say. Two batches of, of those things. So I mix up the resin and do what you shouldn't do. Walk away and start doing something else. And I totally forgot that I had resin sitting there open and totally wasted the entire two batches of blanks. I tried pouring it in and it was so thick that it wouldn't even... And I was like... And of course, that was out of that... Per that was I used up the last of my purple glitter for those that two batches. And I was like, oh, I'm an idiot. That's a, that's a big reason why, I, I, another reason why I don't like using long working time resins because 45 minutes, if, if it's a case where you, you know, you, you got to come back, like let it sit there and wait 40 minutes to get to the end of the working time before you can pour it. I would totally walk away, go do something else, totally forget I'd waste more resin than I'd pour. <laughs> yeah, slimlines are good for cheap. I, frankly, I don't. I don't like the kits. I, there's just most of them are so junky. They don't. They don't last. You know, like like once they're finished, the plating typically is terrible, and so eh, I don't like them personally. But um, but they're okay for for cheap pens. They're not even that quick though either. That's that's another thing is people think, oh, I'm just gonna do a quick slimline. Well, if you want a quick pen, do a, do a Sierra. And I think they look better. They're more expensive though. That, you know, slimlines are super cheap. That's the nice thing about them. Paul's here, what's up? Yeah, slimlines, I think slimlines, they're good for like wood blanks that, that really don't cost anything. And, you know, no matter how far down you turn a wooden blank, you know, the grain's going to look good no matter what, no matter how thin it is. But some of these, you know, blanks that like, the types of blanks like that I make, and, and especially like something like this, with like patterns and things in it, it just, man, it's just not, I don't think it's a good idea to go with a slimline. Or, or anything, you know, super thin like that. They just, they tend to look a lot better on, on bigger pens, I think. <laughs> yeah, two batches. It, it was horrible. I was like, well, there's that. I, I actually, in that, so this one day, um, that was the second mess up in the same day like i basically got to the shop and just screwed things up like it was wonderful i'm like man i should have just gone snowboarding today i would have gotten more done um the first thing that i screwed up was i was doing i poured a batch of pine cone blanks for for that order and it was a i did a double batch and for some reason i thought that they wanted you know like 12 of the white you know, just uh, the white pearl uh, with pine cones in it. 
and they didn't they only wanted like six and so i poured two batches of white pine cones and i only needed one and i'm like oh my god uh, and then i poured and and couldn't even pour just wasted two batches of blanks on the second thing that i did and i'm like wow really do, doing a bang up job today But whatever. I moved on. Those were the only two major mess ups. And really, just, you know, wasting resin, that, that hurts, but it's better than like getting injured or something, you know? <laughs> like I'll take, I'll take wasted resin over an injury any day. Okay, so uh, I'll leave this here. I like to keep the bed covered when I'm doing the uh, the uh, the magic juice polish. Compson click pen. I haven't seen that one. I don't think Zen pens. Yeah, that's a pretty good one. Oh yeah, <laughs> I know. I've done a. It's just maddening, but you know, whatever. Hopefully, a lot of times if you mess something up on a pen, a lot of times you can fix things. So that's that's always good. You can make an adjustment and kind of fix things up. The biggest one I mess up on is, uh, like I'll I'll turn it back, like have the bushings in the wrong place. So like it, you know, like the blank is kind of backwards. That's the worst. Not a lot you can do there. Sometimes you can kind of build up enough, like add CA glue, like a CA finish basically, and get the the low side up high enough, and then you know you can just turn down the the other side. But it can be kind of, it can o oftentimes be devastating when you when you mess up like that. After you screw up three times, you go inside. Yeah, that's true. Or throw things. <laughs> yeah. You made three mistakes during class. Class was over. <laughs> yeah. You did have that happen once. That's funny. Yeah, they actually make some... Uh, some thicker center bands for those i that was i picked some of those up i forget where i got those things um but they, they actually make a thing that that increases that that middle part um and and that made them a lot better i still would rather just if i'm doing a two-piece pen i'd much rather just do a cigar typically per you know personally a lot of this is just kind of personal taste but okay so let's see here we got a Step one. Oh, you don't have the stuff to disassemble. Uh, you can do, like, an easy way to do it is just get a set of the punches. You can get that at, like, Harbor Freight. Uh, they have it on Amazon, too. And you can just use it like a hammer and a punch. That, that works. Um, and in most cases, that's all you really need. In some cases, if you really need to be careful, like, you, you just just don't want to mess anything up on that um then they they do have the disassembly tools um that one what is it called i forget the name of it is it miles craft or oh shoot i don't i don't know turner's warehouse has one that it's got a disassembly tool that that works really well i was pretty happy with it uh, it's like a, a an assembly thing but it also can disassemble um using just kind of pressure it's kind of a neat little setup so but, you know, in most cases, all you really need is a punch and a, and a hammer. Um, and I just, like, wear gloves, so I'm not really scratching anything up. Just hold the blank in my hand and then just punch it out. Uh, a lot of times I'll put, like, you know, like a cloth or something down so that the, when the components come out, they don't just go flying on the concrete, too. All right, step one down. Step two. Yeah, you can turn, yeah, you can do that too. 
you can even just go without a center band. I think I've seen people just kind of butt up the, the two um, blanks, basically. Step three. So we watched, uh, uh, been a long time since we watched Pulp Fiction. We watched that on, on Thursday, on our day off. Um, I was going to ask, uh, does in, anybody like Quentin Tarantino films? And if so, what's your favorite? I think Pulp Fiction is probably mine. It's just such a good movie. Start to finish. I like all of them, kind of. Haven't seen all. Haven't seen all of them, but uh, another one that we're gonna watch is the Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I heard that was pretty good. A little bit different, but than his normal fare. Zooming along here. Step four. It's one of the things I really like about this magic juice. It goes quick, doesn't take any skill, and it works good. Step five, True Romance. Is that a Tarantino film? <laughs> Is Gary me having a hammer in your hand? Um, it's good to have a hammer. I, I used to use like a rubber kind of tipped thing. Um, but the problem is you really kind of need a little bit of mass behind it. You don't need to like pound the heck out of it, but having a little bit of mass when you're tapping on that um, makes it come out a lot easier. So like I said, if it's something where you really, really don't want to damage the component, like there's, there's no, you have no wiggle room, like you cannot damage the components, then you might want to, you know, invest in one of those disassembly kind of setup things. They're just less aggressive in that sense. But I mean, on 90% of things, really, you know, you can, you can just use the, the little punch in a, and a hammer and, and it's pretty it's good it, it's really not and it's easy sometimes the components you get like where the, they were pretty tough to put push in those that's where you kind of run into issues where you're like kind of you really need to kind of step up how hard you're hitting it you know that's where things can get a little dicey but most kits come apart pretty quickly with just you know standard hammer and that the uh, the punch Oh, that'd be kind of cool. Make your own center bands. Nice. Yaks here. What's up, man? That's a good list. I don't know if I've actually watched Jackie Brown. I want to watch that. I want to watch Django. I haven't watched all of them, but, you know, like all the kind of the big ones. Reservoir Dogs, that's that's classic. That's in my list. Um, I like Kill Bill's good. I don't know. 
There's a lot of good ones, you know. The um, uh, what are the what are those two? The the grindhouse ones. Those are pretty good. I like Inglorious Bastards. That's a really funny movie. Um, what else? It's got so many. Oh, that's looking good. Wow. Nice. All right. Ooh. So glossy. Still a little disappointed <laughs> that the, the glow powder sank on these. Again, that was my fault. Uh, if you're going to use like glow powder or, or certain things like, uh, uh, like glitters, um, just, just make sure to wait till kind of, you know, closer to the end of the working time. Um, typically that, that, that pr the pink stuff that I used on this doesn't really move a whole lot. Um, but with liquid diamonds, you know, we poured it like right away and it's a very thin viscosity resin, which makes it really easy for things to fall. So if you pour it right away in something like that, it's gonna, you're gonna end up with <laughs> this, but It'll glow pretty cool on one side. <laughs> like I said, the subscription boxes, I'll, I'll just use the Illumilite Clear Slow. I was just all excited to... I was like, I got brand new liquid diamonds. Let's do it. It's a good one. It is a good resin. Um, it's, it's a really good resin to use, but you got to remember how it operates so you don't mess up. Okay, so I'm gonna get these bushings off of here real quick. I like to just kind of wipe off. I grab a, a paper towel and just kind of see see all that junk. That's magic juice. You don't want to squish that in when you're assembling. All right, we're looking clean now. Get all our toys. Get over here and start assembling. Okay. Let's see here. I'm gonna kind of turn this sideways here. Move all of our parts. Okay. I'm gonna zoom in on this. Oh, we already zoomed in a little bit. Okay. That's looking like a good spot. All right, I always like to just kind of assemble everything, make sure that I'm not putting things on backwards. The hearts lined up correctly. This isn't a very difficult kit, but you know, like I said, it never hurts to just get your Get your ducks in a row. Gotta get the ink. All right. I'll put this guy on first. I'm just gonna double check and make sure. That, yeah, that's right. Got everything right. Tight. I think I'm actually going to take this thing off. Just makes it a little bit of a shorter distance that it has to go. All right. Uh, on this one, there's there's not a lot going on. Uh, you could maybe even offset the hearts, you know. Uh, I think I'm gonna put them the same way, just because we kind of got some like super pink ones, and then we got some bleh 
on the back. So I'm just going to leave the back bleh, basically. Um, but that, I don't know, that might actually be kind of a cool way to do it is, is actually have them um, like 90 degrees when you put this together. Just, just a thought. But like I said, I think I'm going to line mine up. So let me, let me just make sure that I got this thing tightened all the way in. Then what I'm going to do is just kind of get this thing started and then take it apart and finish it up. Uh, you don't want to press all the way um, because you can, you can end up screwing up that plastic, the, the threads, basically. Um, this will push on that plastic piece in there. So I just get it started in there and then come back and, and bring it home. I'm going to go get wax right now. I like to use a little bit of paste wax on those threads for the nib and the, the, the bottom finial thing. Um, just because I can't stand when I'm taking a pen apart and it squeaks. <laughs> I don't know if this one does or not. I didn't check it. Yeah, that's horrible. Definitely, if you're selling pens you definitely want to do this because there's nothing worse than your customer getting their brand new pen that they paid their hard-earned money for and they got to change out the the ink or something and it's squeaking at them uh, it's just it just doesn't leave you you know like with a good taste in your mouth and i found that all you got to do is is just hit it with wax once and it's just a little bit of paste wax or whatever I, honestly i've actually used a candle before and that works fine rub a candle on there and it one time and you're done you're good to go um, I've never actually had it where I needed to apply it again or anything like that it started squeaking down the road okay perfect now we don't have to worry about that. Add that to your checklist. I usually don't really worry about the postable side. You know, if you really want to, you could, you could, um, you know, put this thing on and get this lined up. You know what I mean? I usually don't do that because, I don't know, I guess that's maybe a little bit lazy on my part. We'll do it on this one, but I don't personally find that to be entirely necessary. Uh, but again, you just want to get this started. What's happening here? And then back it out. Sometimes it can kind of twist on you, so just be careful of that. But usually you can just kind of unscrew everything and you're good to go. These are tight. Oof. Like this one might be kind of difficult to get apart with just, it might take a little bit of extra walloping <laughs> with the hammer method hammer time Ooh, this thing's looking sweet though okay so now here's the real question though is what do we do with the clip or the yeah the clip uh, i'm thinking on the side i'm thinking like that oh and i kind of got it a little bit twisted hmm heck's going on here the thing's spinning around in there huh oh there we go okay kind of a tight cap all right i don't think it really matters necessarily i kind of like it on the this right side or 
whichever side this is. Oh, that's really loose. That's funny. So I think I kind of like it like that. Uh, but I'm going to have to add a little bit of CA glue to this because uh, this, this just kind of slides. I can just push it in. So we're going to get a little bit of, uh, you don't want like the super thin uh, for doing this kind of thing. I'm going to get kind of a, like really kind of thicker is better. Um, you just want to add a little dot, um, you know, that's not going to squeeze out or do anything weird and you don't want it running all over the place. So let me grab, I got a, a medium thick. I'm just gonna double check and make sure this is the viscosity that I want. Yeah, I think that'll be good. I'm gonna get a little tip here. Doesn't really matter, you know, brand or anything like that. We just need a drip of. So, this is just a pretty good viscosity. It's not super, super thick, just a little bit. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a little drop in here. You know, so looking at this piece, it'll go in quite a ways, right? So you could do it either way. You can put it, you know, like a, a little drip right here, or you could put it on the inside, it doesn't really matter. But all you need is just like a little tiny drop. That's all you really need to, to hold this thing in. Should have put my clip on before I did that. Okay, and then push that in there. Make sure I'm kind of in the middle. And I am gonna still use the I want to make sure that I get this, you know, that it's going all the way down in. There we go. And you want to be careful for a while. This stuff, I didn't use, I don't want to use accelerator or anything like that. So you're just going to want to, you know, if you have to kind of glue the components in because they're a little loose, um, you want to just kind of set it aside for an hour or more, <laughs> you know, um, so that it doesn't, nothing happens to it. Woo! Looking pretty good. Wow. What do you guys think? That's fancy. Even that side's not bad. It, you know, again, I'm a little disappointed, especially on the top part where you can really see those glue splotches in there. Eh, but it's not that bad. It, you know, it could have been way worse. I've, I've messed things up way worse than that. On pens. Really like that purple and pink though. Wow. Let's see what the glow looks like. I'm going to turn the lights out. Ooh. I don't know if that camera can see anything at this point. Uh, I need to get a hold on got to get a I can't see anything where's my light uh, hold on guys hold on turn off my lathe light too okay I'm gonna do this side look at that they glow pretty nicely. And it's not even really that dark in here, so. Let me get on camera. There we go. The longer you, you, you know, like if you put this out in the sunlight, it'll, it'll really charge those things up. That's pretty cool. Um, this one's glowing too. I don't know if you can see. <laughs> That's the other blank. Not as impressive on this camera, but in, in person, this stuff is glowing really brightly. <laughs> That's fun. Glow in the dark is always fun. 
Gotta love it. All right, lights back on. <clears throat> Get that thing out of the way. Switch to the overhead view. Kid Cooper's here. What's up? Let's see here. Single tube bins? I think it looks good for for doubles. I don't know. I like it for the double. Let's see here. Yeah, the hearts are going to be upside down when you post it. Uh, there's not much you can... <laughs> that's how every blank's going to be. Could have gone the other way? I don't understand. You mean with, like, the clip thing on the other side? Why? What would be the difference? Hmm. See what was Yak talking about? Oh, baby rattle, that's cool. Cool, cool, cool. Sorry, I'm just gonna. Let's see here. Uh, Tony was asking, do I put a lot of pressure on uh, when I'm using magic juice? No, um, you just want to use like moderate light to moderate pressure and let the the stuff just kind of you know uh, work its way in you don't it's not like a like a friction polish or anything like that it's just um there's some grit in that you know the polish stuff so just rub it on let it kind of work itself in and and it it does the, the work for you kind of it's the same same principle as sandpaper you don't want to be pressing hard um, when you're sanding uh, let's see here Uh, tattoo shop for six hours wow that's fun where'd you get it arm leg back oh yeah the glue splotches yeah i know uh, it's but it's just one of those things that i i should have known better to be honest, it's actually kind of an interesting, you know, again, I, I prefer this. This is what I was going for. But this is actually kind of cool because it's three-dimensional. Um, like, you can, you can see in there. It's like little windows. Um, so that's not bad. And that's actually another way that you could do this blank. Um, you know, frankly, you could just not pour anything inside the hearts uh you, hold on you stay with me you could just keep them empty i think or clear i guess maybe it'd be clear you'd probably you'd probably want to go with like clear i guess um but you could you could leave that without color and then paint the inside of the blank uh which is what you would want to do in this case anyway uh yeah so you'd have to go with, you'd have to go with clear you'd have to have something in there um, but uh, uh, if you paint the inside of the blank, then that color is going to show through down in there, but it'll be three-dimensional like this. Um, you could also just use like a transparent, you know, resin instead of clear to fill the hearts. But either way, you're still going to have to paint the inside of the blank to get rid of those glue splotches and make it look like it would be a really cool look, I think, um, especially if you went with like... Um, trying to think you could go with like a probably like a bright pink paint on the inside of the blank would would be pretty cool looking um anything kind of bright where it's it's a little bit it's not just kind of grabbing like like black is not what you would really want in there because it would you know the the light would just kind of die <laughs> basically it wouldn't reflect um so something kind of bright and, and kind of glossy you might get i think that'd be a, a really cool looking way to go i don't know 
Yeah, that's true. Well, and actually, that's actually another another interesting thing is you actually could pour half and half uh, if you wanted to. You could fill the heart um, halfway, you know, on, on one pour and then fill it, you know, do it again, pour another one after it kind of has set up and do two different colors on it. Um, as long as you just get it somewhere around halfway, you'd be good to go. That's actually, that would be a really cool way to go. I didn't ever thought about that. <laughs> glue splotches what happened um what so actually i can show you where's that uh, i was using liquid diamonds which is really thin viscosity and a long working time and we poured right away and i didn't think about it um it just didn't didn't even cross my mind but so this is the blank and you can see at this line there's like kind of a line there and this is all um, the, the glow powder all sank to the bottom and then this is just kind of resin with a little bit of kind of sort of dye in there and so I didn't think about it it just it doesn't cross my mind a lot of times with with, with like long working time resins because I don't usually use them um, so it just the, the stuff sank in the bottom um, so that's why you have like super pink on this side and, and super glowy and then it's kind of like empty on the top but Eh, like I said, it's not what I was going for, but it's kind of cool. It's it's different, you know. Let's let's say at least. So. Let's see here. Yeah, I like the purple. There's a lot of things you could do with this, uh, with that, you know, with these molds. Um, it, there's it's a pretty it's pretty interesting. I, one of the things that I really liked was that Nikki, you know, you have some some components of the the actual like mold thing that are solid so whatever you print and you can print these with different colors um, but whatever those things you know the outline and then these hearts are going to be one color you can do the 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 open the the empty heart part fill those uh, a bunch of different ways and then obviously you have like the main body oh uh, you're yeah <laughs> that's good it's with any any uh, th uh long you know working time resin or like you know not short working time like a, a 10 to 15 minute working time usually that even if i would have poured right away with the lumilite clear slow i don't really think it would have been as dramatic um having having it just sink to the bottom but it had 40 minutes basically to just you know sink and then you pressurize things that can also kind of force certain things down um and so yeah um but yeah liquid diamonds that's it's you want to be waiting until kind of wait till it starts to thicken up you know near the end of the working time for for color swirls or for for you know especially with glow powder glow powders are heavy um, and so they tend to just sink like a rock basically because they pretty much are so yeah good 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 thing to kind of pass on <laughs> what would bob ross say <laughs> happy mistake yeah yeah so i'm pretty happy with it so anyway guys a uh, big reminder next weekend turner's warehouse show up have fun there's probably even going to be food because they usually you know bring food out so uh lots of different demos uh i'm doing one and i think there's like five other people that are doing free demos there's also some one-on-one -on -one paid classes i'm doing one-on-ones um, I don't know if any of them are if it's full filled up if they've or if there's openings still um, but I do have one each day um, so contact Amy at Turner's Warehouse you can I think it's just Amy at Turner's Warehouse.com if you want to sign up for one of those and it would be whatever topic you want to cover with resin casting we can do whatever um, and the cool thing about that is you'll probably take something home we'll, we'll like make something unless it's I'm trying to think if there's any situation where you wouldn't be able to actually take the casting home but you should in most cases be able to take it home too so that's one of the cool things about one-on-ones uh jim hines is doing a uh, he's got at least one class that he's doing one-on-one -on -one, um and it's going to be like bespoke pen turning i think uh so there's lots of things going on and there's probably you know discounts i'm sure i, I don't know even the full story of what's going on but it's going to be a pretty crazy weekend down in phoenix so Hope to see you guys there if you're gonna if you can make it out, and I think that's about it. And uh, I'll just drop a, a link to the uh, the Hearts Box 3D print file. Again, not a physical product; it's the the file so that you can print your own if you have a 3D printer. That's available on the website. And let's see here: is there anything else? Any other questions? Anything else going on? 
Yeah. Oh, actually, so I, before we go, before we go, um, next week, I'm not going to be doing a live stream, uh, but Turner's Warehouse is live streaming the, the demos as well. Uh, so make sure to head over. I knew there was something I was forgetting. <laughs> YouTube. Turner's TV. So turn, they have a different, I don't know if you guys even know about this, but they have like a Turner's Warehouse uh, YouTube channel called Turner's TV. And th that's where they're going to be streaming all these good, good things. All right. So if you cannot join the fun, you can still tune in and partake in the demos. I told, I'm sorry. I forgot about mentioning that at the beginning. Um, so go and subscribe to their channel too. They're just, it's kind of a smaller one, but they do all their like very like Turner's warehouse specific stuff on that channel. And I think that's about it. So I hope everybody has a wonderful evening tonight and stay out of trouble. Have a happy Valentine's Day. And I will see you guys on the next live stream. It'll be in two weeks. So two Saturdays from now, okay? All right, guys, have a good night and I'll see you later.